Something just come to you. you. Think, oh Lord, I just pray for that person. And away you go. You're on a journey, continually asking and seeking the things of God. So he asks us to go outreaching. Then there's the care aspect where he says, make disciples. Care for the babies. Care for the new babies of Christ. Bring them up. See, Jesus is into caring for people. He says, care for each other. Care for the lost, the wounded, the widows, the orphans. Jesus is into care. And so is God. And then he's into kinship as well. He's into family. Because he says this, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the family of God. We are one. So see, God's ministry is restoration, outreach, care, and kinship. And that's what you want to know where to be in the right place to receive from the Holy Spirit. Live in that realm. If you live in that realm, you're living in the realm of the Spirit of God. He says to love one another, to forgive one another, to go the extra mile, to share things with each other. I wonder if we shared any equipment with each other lately. Anyone need a mower? I've got a mower you can use. I've... Too many times we worry about giving it to someone because it comes back worse. Who's had that happen? Lots of people. All right? And sometimes they say, oh, I don't want to do that again. You know, I'll lend the car and the clutch comes back burning out or something. You know? But at the end of the day, we have to share, and that's life. That's what we should be doing with each other. But you know, there's so much pride out there too. There's so much pride that people don't want help, especially Christians. I find so much pride in Christians. Oh, look, we've got food parcels here for you. You've got no food. You really need help. Oh, I'll be right, thanks. This is your food parcel. This is your food bank here. No, that's okay. Can we help pay a bill? No, no, oh, oh, God will get me through. We need to be people that help and get help. When you need it, we need to just get rid of everything. And, you know, you look at Acts, you know, they sold things and they laid at the feet so people wouldn't be without need. That's the New Testament church. That's this section that we're into. Thank God we belong to a church like that. We must get around those who want to receive what you want to receive. Find someone who's in the like mind, who's hungry for the things of God, or have a hunger or a desire for an outreach thing that you like to do, an omissions thing, that you can get around them and really go for it and press in. It's so important. And the last thing I really believe is that we must share our experience. See, these disciples, they not only had an encounter with Jesus Christ, they not only had a promise with Jesus Christ, they not only had ensured that they were in the right place at the right time, but they shared their experience because it says that they went out and preached the gospel. Now you need to understand that in Acts chapter 7, there was a thing called involuntary evangelism that happened because they were getting so uh, at peace in themselves and they were getting slack as a church that God allowed persecution to come through the church through the stoning of Stephen and it says they scattered everywhere. Don't let God have to use persecution to scatter us. We need to just get out there and be able to be those sort of people for God. We must share experience. If we continuously receive and we have no outlet, we become like the Dead Sea. God wants putting stuff in. He's pouring stuff into you all the time. You're reading the word. You're pouring it in. I mean, how many times this week have you even shared with someone, do you know what? This week I read this. That was pretty good. And it doesn't matter if you heard it a thousand times or you know every theological answer on it. You go, that's awesome. That is good because it's a great word. And it's absolutely a fantastic word for those people who, who've read it. We need to encourage each other and be there for each other and continue to do the things of God. We need to build faith in others. We need to build faith in yourself. We need to share times of the Holy Spirit encounters that you've had. You know, this week I've just been sitting home and the Spirit of God just flooding over me. And I really didn't want to leave. Me. I was looking at my watch and didn't want to come. And, oh, it was so awesome. Those sort of things encourage us other. Well, I could probably do that. I could, I'd love that. And so by us sharing experiences, it, it transforms people. Just recently, I had an opportunity of talking to a guy. And I shared my testimony about what happened down in Sydney where God took me through, Jesus took me through and held my hand and I said to him, it was hard that I had a relationship with him because I saw him as a man because I was abused at that age and that age. 
I said this to the guy over coffee. And I thought that was pretty good. And do you know what? He came back and he said to me, rang me and he said, and he, and he emailed and he texted, he did everything. And he said, you know what? I so much enjoyed that. I can't believe what that has done for my life. And he said, when you shared that, he said, you know what? That happened to me twice. The same one as well. And I haven't even told my wife. I've told no one in my whole life. But when you said that, it just set me free. It broke something in my life. You see what I'm saying? You don't know what you can do to someone just by your testimony. And that's what we have to do. Get out there and do it. And when we do it, we're doing what God asks us to do. And we're in the right place to receive. Yeah? Your testimony is so powerful. It's so, don't ever knock your, per, your testimony. Oh, I wasn't in jail and I wasn't this. Who cares about that? What have you experienced in life? We need to allow the Holy Spirit to have boldness and power upon our lives. I ask the music team to come back up again. We're going to stand together right now. We're just going to raise our hands and just wait in the presence of the Lord for a little bit, hey? We're in the right place. Are we not? Do you want to receive this morning? Let's just receive afresh from him. We're right here. The Holy Spirit's in this place. He's living in your heart. He wants to flow through. You know, if you want to be prayed for, have your hands laid upon you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just as Paul did to those disciples, we will do that. You may have already been prayed for to receive. Well, now this is your time to say, God, I'm just going to go for it and trust you. Lord, I'm going to say whatever comes in my mind because I know that's how you speak to me. And I'm going to say something, Lord, and I'm going to let you activate that because it's like when you start moving, the Spirit of God jumps on things, you know what I mean? And away it goes. And you might just raise your hands this morning and just thank Him, Lord. I just thank you so much for my life, for my family, for my wife, for my kids, for my job, for everything you've given to me. Let's just worship him a little bit. We're in that place right now. Let's lift our hands and let's just worship him. Let's just do something different. And I'm just going to let you just sing a song. and We're not even going to sing. We're just going to worship him. We're going to listen to you guys, but we're just going to worship him. Lord, oh, see, mama. Maybe you just need to speak in tongues quietly or allow whatever you want to do. You just do.